All right, you've probably heard that uh, color changing times on the Bamboo Lab H2C versus the Snapmaker or the Prusa Index system, uh, that it's excessively long. And I've got the H2C in the shop here, and we're gonna take a look at it because I've heard it too. I've seen anywhere from uh, 20, sub 20 seconds to a minute and 20 seconds with the average being around 46 seconds. And I'm gonna show you the color swap that just I just filmed and it's right at 46 seconds. So let's take a look at it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna run it through. You can just watch it. I'm not gonna talk over it or anything. And we're gonna talk about it, then, we're gonna break it down step by step what it's doing because I think, honestly, I think Bamboo Labs is sandbagging. It, it's elegant to watch and it doesn't, when you're watching it, it really doesn't feel like 46 seconds, but it is. And if you're doing hundreds of color swaps in a print like we are with that, it really does take up time. So let's break it down and talk about what's going on at each segment so we know exactly what, what has to stay and what's fat that can be trimmed. There's the initial color swap where it stops printing and it goes over and it does a sort of purge, anti-prime if you would, of the filament that's in the nozzle. And then after that, it's gonna go and do a purge of whatever excess is in that nozzle. All of this is stuff that no other system does. I And I don't know why they're doing it. There's nothing hardware wise that seems to require it. All right, and next it's going to cut the filament, which is something it's gotta do, your AMS requirement. That's something we can't get away from. And then it's going to retract that filament. Now, I'll be honest, I have an excessive amount of PTFE tubing on the back of this. I didn't trim down any of it, and I honestly could cut a two-thirds of the PTFE tube out. So it could be quite a bit faster. But to be honest, it's pretty quick. And, uh, it's, and I think if they manage the time, it could be even faster. This could come up here, and it's going to do the head swap there. It's the parts one head. And then it picks up another head, it locks it in place, and now it's going to start the induction heating process. Now the heating process takes approximately eight seconds from when it picks up. Now remember these heads are passive just like the index system, so you can't preheat them like the Snapmaker can. That's one of the big benefit for the Snapmaker. So it's gonna preheat that, and while it's heating that, it's sending the filament from the AMS, again, faster than you think. I mean, if, yeah, I hear a lot of the Prusa fanboys go, oh, but the reality is if you watch it, it's really quick. It's not, the, it's not the slowest part of this whole situation, not by far. And now it's going to build the prime tower there. And this prime tower is excessive. And it's one of the things, it's the one thing that did get changed. In fact, it's the one thing I alluded to before is they've already come out with a software change uh, that allows you to change. Uh, this was the original prime tower for those, those bears, those Santa bears you saw. And then this is the prime tower on a print I just did with the new settings. That is not even remotely close. This, I think, as I said, I think they're sandbagging, trying to create exceptional print quality that, so people can't complain about print quality in exchange for speed. But I think one of the things I'm, I, and I, I wanna, it's gonna be interesting to see how these other companies handle it when I think, Bamboo does what is inevitable, which is they're going to hit the turbo button. In fact, I think better yet, they're gonna give you the option. They already have, there's already a button that says, do a prime like this or do a prime like this. I think in most cases, people are gonna prime like this, unless you're color swapping in the AMS in the same nozzle, which is 
all like the, the same, like you don't have a dedicated color for a dedicated nozzle. So you wanna make sure there's no color bleed, you'll go with this option. If there's gonna be dedicated color per nozzle, you'll go with this no option. Now, why would you do it the other way? We can talk about that later, but let's take a look. Let's keep going here. And then last but not least, it starts printing again. That's, there's a lot of fat in there. A lot of fat that can be trimmed. Now, I can't show you the Prusa system. Actually, it's index. I keep calling it Prusa system. It's the index system. Prusa's just licensing it. Um, and the because they didn't show it, really. I mean, they've, they've allowed other people to film it at index, but you go to Prusa's website or, I mean, or to their YouTube channel, and there's nothing. There's nothing on it, uh, which is weird. Uh, they're, and there are ways from shipping, apparently. Uh, Snapmaker, though, shipping right now, uh, has, they've gone full boat, all right? You're getting the full print head, which gives you a lot more uh, ability to plan ahead. Now, here's what their system looks like. Now, they're saying five seconds, so let's take a look at it. All right, it stops printing. It goes, it drops off one print head, picks up the second print head, uh, and then it's printing again. That's insane, all right? Insanely fast. And they could do this because they are not... Uh, they're, they, they're not having to pick up the, the nozzle and then heat it up because they know, the system already knows in 15 seconds, I'm gonna need that nozzle, heat up, purge prime and get it ready. So when it picks it up, it's already ready to jump on the bus, all right? It's, it's, it's already got its bags packed, he's off to school, he's good to go. The, it's, the Prusa and the, uh, the bamboo systems can't do that. Now, so that's gonna get you some real time savings. The opposite side of that is uh, you have bigger, uh, you know, bigger print heads because they have the full boat in them. There's more money because uh, the index system and the, the, the nozzle system from Bamboo are just, just those. So if you wanna buy a new one, it's just that. Whereas you gotta buy a whole print head. There's give and takes. There's no perfect system out there, but you gotta like, you know, for a thousand dollars, basically getting a full size print head that you can color swap and will be. I mean, if you want speed, you're not going to be able to beat the Snapmaker system, all right? Or the Prusa XL, or whatever the their their color. Changing a full uh, print head, you're just uh, the no other system is going to beat that. There may be more elegance and nuance and you know benefits to going with just the nozzle only or the nozzle plus like the Index system, but anyway, just for clarity, so. What though can we trim down? Because what I'm seeing here is, even with all that, there's a lot of excess going on with the bamboo system. So what if we cut out the, the D prime? Because why does it need so much time to D prime? Why does it need, why can't it do more overlap with the running of the filament and the uh, retreat, return of the filament and running of the filament? I went through this frame by frame and I've trimmed it down to the point where I think that I could show you what the end goal, let me get over here to it, what the end goal is for bamboo. If we trim out all the excess overlap steps that can be overlapped, I don't see mechanically wise why it can't look something like this. Now that is never gonna be as fast as the Snapmaker, all right? That is a 19 second color swap. And we know they can do that because it already does it sometimes. So what's going on right now is that Bamboo is playing it safe by just taking extra time, taking their time to purge when they don't need to purge, taking their time to, uh, you know, to let the, you know, the, the get as much filament out of the print head uh, as they can to make sure it's the best and there's no bubbles or anything else. The Prusa one I've seen takes zero time. It, it, I don't even know why it has a prime tower. It basically seems to skip it anyway. Uh, the, the Snapmaker does have one, uh, but as you saw in the video, when they count it, there it w wasn't really taking time to do anything with it. Uh, so I think that they're just playing it safe rather than sorry. And we're going to see options going forward. And I like the fact they're gonna, that they are going to give us options because they've already done it once. And they did it really quietly. They didn't announce big big time like, hey, this is here. I think they are 
using the real world scenario and all the feedback they're getting from these machines as they get out there to go, okay, what fat can we trim? What options can we put in place? And how can we speed this up? And I think within probably by the time that Prusa launches, we're going to see an average 20 second color swap from the, uh, from the Vortex system. That, of course, is going to be entirely reliant on how much PTFE tube you have back there. Because if you're like me and I've got like an extra two loops in that that I don't need, I can cut it down to one of three loops. Because uh, that's what it came with. Because uh, it's assuming you're going to run from over here and all this other stuff. If I chop that down, I can cut a, a third out right there, right now, without even their help. So then the question becomes, what system's right for you? I think that there are cases where the Snapmaker system is the best choice. In fact, I also looked around, did some little, you know, I'm, I'm a part-time engineer on the side. Uh, I don't get paid for it, unfortunately. But <laughs> anyway, the point is, I took a look at it and I don't see, you know, they've got the carriages at the back where the print head or the carriage system comes out and grabs the print heads from the back. I don't see why for the Snapmaker 2, they couldn't do a double-sided carriage where there were four carry, four print heads on the back, four print heads on the front, and it could grab from either one and print from either one. Uh, and you could then have an eight print head system in the same size box or nearly the same size box with a better than average build plate. You gotta love that, all right? Now, as far as the Prusa system, I, I've said before, I think the index system is glorious. It's going to be really stunning once they finish their uh, their time working with just Prusa and they open it up to the rest of the community. I can't wait to see that. Uh, as far as the HTC, the Vortex system, I think software-wise, they're going to make some changes and it's going to get sped up. Here's why I like the, I, I do like the index system. Remember, there's no perfect tool, all right? Now, you can't. You can't drive screws with a hammer. Okay, you can, but it ain't gonna be pretty, and that's exactly what we're talking about here. There are things you can do with a nozzle system and an AMS that you can't do with the nozzle system like Index has, that you can't do with the uh, full print head change system like Snapmaker has. You give things up, all right? Uh, I can have, first of all, less width. All right, I could print a bunch of, for, like in my shop, I don't know about you, but in mine, I can do way more with vertical space than I can do with horizontal space. My horizontal space is at a premium in my shop. But vertical space, I got nine foot ceilings. If I want to put uh, an H2C, I could put it on a low table and I could stack four EMSs above it easily. And I could then go boom, 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 boom next to it and have a whole bunch of stuff or other storage or filaments or all sorts of stuff. With the Prusa and the Snapmaker, they've got those suckers stuck on the sides. And I've seen some mods for the Snapmaker already that then encase it, make it even wider. It's cool and all, but it's getting kind of bulky. Uh, the Then, you know, what about the fact that I can also hook up, was it 24 rolls? And people are like, nobody needs that. I love people telling me gatekeeping. Dude, if you're playing the gatekeeping game, nobody needs, but you've already lost, all right? You've already lost that argument if you're gatekeeping. There are times I can definitely sit there and see. I, I was one of the ones who used to believe that I never needed multicolor until I got a multicolor machine. And I was like, holy cow, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. And it really opened my eyes. So now looking at like, hey, can I have a library of 24 colors that I can print from at any time or all even in the same print? And I can print through different nozzles and I can even swap. Everyone thinks of this stuff as, well, you have to dedicate one color to one nozzle. You don't have to do that. If you're willing to put up with some waste, you can swap out. So I've got a two millimeter and I've got a six millimeter. I, if I don't want to have to go and change out my entire system, I can say, you're going to this one now, and you're going to that one, you're going over here, and I can create a mesh of colors and rainbows and sizes and stuff that is just not reasonably possible with uh, any of the other non-AMS style systems out there. Now, but the takeaway from that is, Snapmaker's faster, all right? It's compact, uh, it's... Uh, it, 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 you can, you know, the preheating, all that kind of stuff, you can do a lot more management with it. There are benefits either way. So anybody who's like, this system's better, this system's better, what's the job you're doing? Nah, stop fanboying, guys. These companies aren't coming over to make you breakfast, all right?
If they make a great product, they make a great product. If they don't make a great product, then, then don't buy it. If, even if they do make a great product, but it doesn't suit what you are doing or what I'm doing, don't buy it, all right? That said, I will put links down below in case you do want to buy it. And I appreciate they are affiliate links and we get a few small measly percentages out of it and it doesn't affect your bottom line. Anyway, trying to answer questions for you, for those people who are looking to invest, uh, you know, I honestly, when I first heard about the H2C, I'm like, that's great for the hobbyist or the engineer or the guy prototyping, but it isn't really great for rapid production. Um, you know, I, shoot, do you have any idea how much I could sell these things for? I could, and how many of them I could sell. And this is something that is just, it's a five color print, not reasonably possible. I would, I would have to charge three times the price if I printed it through an AMS system. Uh, and uh, only the tool changers make this kind of thing possible. And with the size of the print bed on the HSC, HSC, H2C, um, I could, I can print uh, 14, I could probably optimize it and get a couple more in there, but I'm printing right now 14 at a time. I'm telling you, there is money to be made for the print rancher who wants to get into some really high quality, multi-color prints with stuff like the Snapmaker, the, the Index, or the, uh, the, the H2C. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. If you like what we do, go ahead and chomp the old like button, smash that subscribe, ring the bell on the way out. You all take care, God bless, and as always, shine on.